And I think my frustration doesn't come out from being frustrated that you have depression. You said, what could you be doing better? Yeah, um, it was. <laughs> well, I meant, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Read it all. I'm just Trying to close that gap as soon as possible when there's, when I've done something wrong. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Struggles with Girlfriend podcast. Austin, Sydney, and we're back ish maybe yeah we'll see i'm just kidding you know there's just seasons in life where it's hard to like to get here and to set all this up and to like talk yeah like emotionally hard yeah when there's just other things in life that seem to have priority and take priority sorry if you can hear our kids we're supposed to be going to bed, but they're having a good old time together. Kids and dishwashers on right now, <laughs> so you might hear both. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, at least we're here. And yeah, so we thought that in this episode, um, just since we've took a couple months off, that we're just going to ask each other questions because we just celebrated eight years of marriage. And so here we go. And if you love our podcast... And, you know, love our ministry. We would love for you to just let us know. Give us five stars wherever you're listening. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Like, comment, share, all the good things. We would greatly appreciate your support. And anyway, go ahead. All right. Me first? Sure. I thought ladies first. You are asking the lady the first question. Valid. Um, Okay, so what has been the hardest thing you've learned in eight years of marriage? I don't like this question. Okay, hold on. The hardest thing that I've had to learn in the past eight years of marriage is, I feel like this answer changes all the time. Today, it's just, there are things that happen that I can't change. Mm. And that's really, I think, I don't, I'm one of those people, I keep everything bottled in. Mm -hmm. So there gets a point where I bottle it in so much that I just burst out and kind of complain. Yeah. But initially, like, I'm just trying to keep it all together. But Mm -hmm. inside, like, I'm having a pity party about whatever it is in our life that is going on, whether it's people outside of our control. Yeah. You know, just stuff that I don't like and that I wish it wasn't in my life and I wish I wouldn't have to deal with it. And a lot of it I didn't even do, you know. Yeah. And I have to come to terms with, like, I can't change that, yet I can still be thankful that, like, I have a God and I have Jesus in that moment. And that's a hard – it's just hard to get to that point. But What about in our marriage? Relating to our marriage. The hardest thing I've had to learn in our marriage? Yes. Is that the question? Okay. Well, that still happens. It you is. You do stuff that I can't change and i got to deal with it. Amen. <laughs> but you would say that would be the hardest thing? I'm just, well, when you said you're, our eight years of marriage, that's like eight years. And there's just been things in here that we can't control. There's been accidents where we've had to go to the hospital You know, Mm -hmm. I couldn't control that. I couldn't change that. You know, I can't change when me and you, you know, have our seasons of, like, we want to punch each other in the face. (laughs) I can't, you know, like. Yeah. I I can't change everything, Mm -hmm. but in the midst of it, you know, like, we've been through seasons where, like, we don't know how we're going to pay for this this month, you know. Or just, like, uncertainties. Like, I can't change them, but in the midst of them, I can still be thankful. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a hard lesson to learn. And I just realized that we're both color-coordinated. Dang it, Austin. I was dressed first. He picked out our clothes. Like, don't... He planned this. No, no, no. I really did. Okay. I'll just ask you the same question, then. Hardest thing. Um, putting others first. Okay. Out of everything. So out of hardships and struggles and 
bouts with depression and having kids and all of those things, the hardest thing I've had to learn, and I think for every young man, this is the key to a healthy marriage, is you have to you have to not care about you. And that sounds like negative, like, but you have to not. You have to put others first because if you don't, your marriage is empty. Your relationship with your kids will be empty. Your relationships with other people will be empty. Like, mm-hmm. you've got to be willing to sacrifice. And I have not always been willing to sacrifice. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> Me either. Okay. Did I answer that one too fast? Yeah. Oh, goodness. All right. So, What's the thing that has been the most, or like, there's been a lot of fun moments yeah. in our eight years, but like, what is like a highlight of the funnest thing that either you've gotten to do or we've done together or with the kids or something? Funnest thing that we've gotten to do. There's not been like a, like a major thing that's been like, man, this is it. There's been so many, like, core memories, right, is what I would call them. So what's one? Sprinkled. Um, tie-dyeing shirts, tie-dyeing shoes. Um, those are little ones. Yeah. Uh, even so today, like, whatever Harper was doing in the driveway with her <laughs> chalk paint. Um, she takes chalk and um, d- puts it in water and lets it get kind of wet and it turns into like a paint. And so you can still hold the chalk and write with it, but then she like is able to blend it. I don't know. It's really cool. She's really artsy. so Very. She was in the driveway doing that. So stuff like that. And then. And you just started like drawing with her. Yeah. Uh, you know, coaching Tobias's soccer team, <laughs> which I'm awful at soccer and children but we did it and we won the first year the second year not so much yeah that's okay it's all right it's john osterman's fault (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh um my turn to ask you a question all right what has been i'm sorry i'm yawning it's like Past nine o'clock. Sorry, go ahead. So, what's been your favorite memory out of eight years together? What's been one of your favorites? Okay. Not the favorite. Yeah. What's been one of the favorites? I think it was the first thing that just comes to my mind is it wasn't last year. I think it was the year before. It was basically like the first time that we ever got to spend a full on week at my mom's new beach house. Mm. Because they're like, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. And it really just got to be like our family. And like my mom was there. But we just got to like, it was something new. Like it was, we'd never been there before. Yeah. It was exciting. We got yeah. to like experience a lot of cool things. And we got to like discover this island that no one knew about because the beach was just so like just flooded with people and we're not used to that being near like New Smyrna and stuff, which now it's kind of flooded with people. But this one was like insane. Yeah. And that's just, we wanted to get away and like relax. So we found that place and no one else was there and it was relaxing and the kids just got to play and, you know, learn new things. And I don't know, that was just like, I think of that as probably one of the most restful times for us Mm -hmm. because I feel like we were in a really good we're just like in a good little spot like it wasn't like we were running away from anything it was just we wanted to just get away and rest yeah that was 2021 yeah yeah I remember that it took you until like day three or four to like really be able to relax I think we're both that way like we just got off of Well, we both took vacation from work, but we stayed home and we did home projects and we did like fun things, but I don't think it took me until like day three or four to like, just be able to just be and like rest, you know, that's why like weekend getaways, like they don't do much 
for me, you know? Yep. You're not gone long enough. <laughs> A child is coming. Oh, no. Go and potty. All right, go ahead. Okay. Wait. Wait, you just asked me yeah. a question. Sorry. Come on, dude. Okay. Um, what can I be doing better? I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure they can hear him peeing. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the mics are going to pick that up. Okay. Please make sure you flush. We're working on flushing. Dude, you're in your underwear, bro. Go, buddy. Go to bed. Good night. Good night. Mm. Love you. Good night. Good night. It's going. I know, it's Go. going. We're in the middle of what? Go to bed. said that out <laughs> no we're just gonna leave it all right okay you said what could you be doing better yeah uh, it was <laughs> well i meant i'm just kidding <laughs> read it all i'm just joking. <laughs> joking okay um what has it, and it can be like a sad hard moment mm -hmm. like within our marriage so we can talk about all the highlights. Yeah. But, you know, there have been things, but what is something that was probably like the hardest thing that we've had to go through, but in the end of it, like you're grateful that it happened because, you know, growth and. Yeah. Um, gosh. It's been a lot of things. <laughs> it's been a lot. Um, but I think the one that caused the most growth still kind of happens. And it's a lot like, especially when you go into seasons of depression and things like that. Like those are very hard. They're hard on everybody, and especially you. Um, at the same time, there are things that have come out of those seasons that mm -hmm. we wouldn't have, or ideas, or thoughts, or the way that we approach life. Like none of those things would have happened unless those seasons happened. Yeah. Do you get, when you say it's hard on everyone, do you get mad at me? Mm. Mad? At you? Yeah. No. I think there's this wrestle with faith, right? Is like we believe God can heal. We've seen it, right? Mm. And we're called to be like the persistent widow, right? And the unjust judge. Yeah. It's a lot to be the persistent widow at times. And I think my frustration doesn't come out from being frustrated that you have depression or manic depression or state, you know, type two bipolar or whatever it is you want to call it. Um, my frustration often comes from like just God. I mean, nobody wants to talk about their frustrations with God, right? We never have those things. Yeah. But that's what it comes down to, is just frustrated with God that this isn't done, this isn't taken away, we have to walk through it again. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I mean, things wouldn't have changed, or things wouldn't grow, we wouldn't be where we are without those seasons. And here comes number two. Hey, baby, yeah. it's bedtime, okay? No, mommy is scaring me. Will you tell him? That if he keeps scaring you, daddy will come in there and I'll scare him. How about that? She had such a sad face. I know she did. <laughs> Please close the door. Close the door, please. I want to give mommy a kiss and hug. Oh my gosh. Can I hug? Oh, don't walk over here. Don't walk in front of all the cords and stuff. Love you. Love you. 
He was, he was asking questions now. Me. Oh, no, wait, I just asked you yeah, that. You so just you're asked. asking me a question. <laughs> He's scaring her. Yeah, I know. Mommy scared me. All right. Well, here, we're almost done with this. We want to finish it. Go close the door. Please. And you can sit beside Faith on the floor while we finish and be quiet. Okay. Um, all right, questions for you. Let me try to collect my thoughts now. Um, sit right there. What has been... What have you learned the most about? Through this seat, through eight years of marriage, right? What have you learned the most? Well, about? like, what are you talking? Like, what so, is the when it comes the to category. marriage or okay. like relationship? Because that's what we're talking about. Okay, I have learned, and this is something recent, so that's just the first thing that comes to my mind, is trying to close that gap as soon as possible when there's when I've done something mm. wrong, or we're just for some reason like we feel like we're at odds with one another Over and we petty, don't even right? really know why yeah. you know like that just happened yeah. you know a few days ago yeah. we were just in the car we were just ups- we, we didn't really know why but like we finally i feel like in the past we would have let that go on yeah. for so long because we wanted to like hold on to that yeah and um you know like i watched a sermon on grieving the holy spirit and the Holy Spirit is just very like sensitive. And mm-hmm. so when you when you've done something wrong and you take forever to apologize and ask for forgiveness yeah. and like have that reconciliation, the spirit's just grieving because it wants you to do the right thing. Yeah. And it knows what's best for that relationship. And so he just put it so great, like close that gap. Like yeah. don't let that go so long Mm. because that just that puts you and I at odds and against one another instead of like for one another and thinking about one another and serving one another we just you know it just I don't know that's it I think for right now that's good I mean that's a big thing that's something that we both had to work on yeah. It's not just a you thing for sure. So what about you? Same question. Cheater, dude. No, I just want to know your answer. Pumpkin eater. You have to ask another one. Um, all right. What I've learned the most about, um, being right isn't always right. For both parties. Yep. Yeah. Being right isn't always the right thing to do. Not because we love false truths or anything like that. What did you want to be right about the other day? How to say monarch? Monarch? Yes. Yes. Now, now listen. <laughs> I, do we want to go there? See, you, you're wanting to be right right now. <laughs> All right. So, yes. Being right yeah. is not always right. And that sounds cliche, right? No pun right. intended. Um, but it's the truth. Yeah. There's so much more important things in marriage and relationships and families than just being the person who's right. Mm. And if you want that, like if that's everything that you want to be is just the right person all the time, you're just going to burn people out around you. People aren't looking for the person who's always right. They're just looking for the person who's going to be there. Yeah. All right, real question. Okay, what is the, like, thinking about, what's the goofiest, funniest thing Absolutely. that's happened? Goofiest, funniest thing? Yeah. In marriage? Yeah. Or just our time together. It could be family, you know, whatever. I'll tell the steward. <laughs> <laughs> You're not telling that story. <laughs> Fine, just tell the story. No, no, no. How about the David Buster? It was a Buster? sinful time. How about the David Buster story? <laughs> no. Um, Never. I'm telling you, there's, there's some good Can ones. you just get past 
the stuff that's embarrassing to me and just say something else. All right. So, goofiest thing, goofiest time. Um, gosh, that's really hard. That's a really hard one. Because there are a lot of fun, there are a lot of goofy, funny moments. Well, just say one. The time that you touched my computer <laughs> with your toe just then. It <laughs> went dark. Don't do that. Um, um, gosh, I'm, you're going to have to give me more time to think. Well, what's the goofiest thing that you can think of? I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. We are in deep waters now with two children out of bed. Um, All right. Just tell a funny story. Go. All right. Funniest story. We'll end on funny stories. All right. Funniest story that I've got. None of them are appropriate because they have to do with our kids. What <laughs> make about their bodies? <laughs> oh, Mr. Barry. That had to be one of the goofiest things. So Sydney is teaching at a co-op, um, helping, and then there was this art class that the kids were well, in. Well, I wasn't the art teacher. You weren't. She you was were gone just that helping. day, and I was filling in for her. Yeah. So they were making bears out of. Circles. Object, circle yeah. object. Tobias does a bear, and it's awesome. And then Sydney goes, would you like to add anything else? And he goes. I meant, like, color. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. He goes, oh, yeah, I do. He draws an anatomically correct male bear <laughs> in front of everyone. And I'm up at the front of the room, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then he saw my face. And then he decided, I guess, to try to hide it and color it black. <laughs> and scribble it out. I was so... But I'm texting him and I'm sitting him. I'm like, you would not believe what just happened. I got... And then he was just, like, proud. I was so proud. <laughs> I sent that to all of my friends. And they thought it was the best thing ever. That has to be one of the goofiest moments. For sure. man that's funny all right guys <laughs> thank you so much for watching and listening if you're on youtube remember to subscribe and give us some likes and if you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify give us five stars and we would love to read your review of our podcast and be honest if you're loving the podcast or if there's something that we can be doing better we love you guys so much and we'll see you back there next time bye